Welcome back to Dave's podcast. A few years ago, I wrote a book called The Bloke's Bible, and it was about a guy who uh, regularly visited his local pub, uh, bought a pint of Guinness, and sat down at a table in a comfy chair with his little leather-backed Bible and read a passage from it, a story from it or whatever, and reflected on it and also looked at the other characters in the pub and how it might relate to them and kind of an earthy way of retelling some of these stories. But I took a lot of them from the Old Testament. I know a lot of people find it difficult and in fact it's often used as a kind of a, a, a way of discrediting the Bible because people say it's just full of violence and there is certainly a lot of violence in the Old Testament but there's plenty of other stuff as well. I realised that what I used to do in the past was to uh, begin with the New Testament and then try and squash the Old Testament into the New Testament or if you like to see the Old Testament through the lens of the New Testament. I w once heard a bishop say that what a lot of people do is they start off with the letters in the New Testament, many of them written by Paul, and then they view the Gospels, which are the blogs about Jesus, the four Gospels, they view them through the lens of the letters, and then again they view the Old Testament through the lens of the letters and the Gospels. So all the time they're, they're kind of coming at it the wrong way around, as I was really. The point is that the Old Testament came first. In one of his letters to a guy called Timothy, Paul says to him that all of the Bible is inspired by God and is useful for teaching and guiding and equipping and strengthening and all of that kind of thing. But what's fascinating is Paul is not talking about the New Testament at all then, because when he was writing that letter, his letters, other people's letters and the four Gospels, the four blogs about Jesus had not been collected into any sort of discernible group at that point. In fact, some of it hadn't been written at all. So all Paul is thinking about is the Old Testament. So he's saying all of the Old Testament is inspired by God and is useful for guiding us and helping us and correcting us and showing us life in all its fullness. So that's the point where I want to begin, really. And one of the things that I like about the Old Testament is I think it gives us room to manoeuvre. It gives us room to be human. I need room to manoeuvre. I need to be able to make those mistakes. And what you find in the Old Testament is that what happens with a lot of these characters is they get it right, they get it wrong, they get it right, they get it wrong, they get it right, they get it wrong, they die. And it's a kind of honest telling of that story. And I think if you can move away from seeing the Bible simply as a book of rules or a book of guidance, but rather an account of people's lives with God and their mistakes and their moments of triumph and their ups and downs. And then we see where we fit into that picture. We see who are we in a comparison with that. It frees us up a lot. And one of the things you find with the Old Testament, coming back to the violence part, is that God communicates with people in the dark places. God's not afraid of the dark. He connects with people on battlefields, in families that have broken down, in times of grief and terrible loss, in pain and suffering, in these dark places of life which everybody encounters. That's often in the Old Testament where people discover something or learn something or connect with God in a new way. One thing the Old Testament certainly does is it smashes to bits that kind of um, prosperity gospel. The idea that if you follow God, you'll be happy and healthy and wealthy. That's talked about in the Old Testament and people aspire to that and they want that to be the case. But if you look at the stories and what they're telling us, what you find time and again is that people encounter other things. They encounter trouble and strife and poverty and loss. And these people who live through these difficult situations, they're the ones telling us about God. Some of the people in the Old Testament are rich, certainly some are powerful, but even they encounter trouble. But you also get many poor characters, many struggling characters, many people who maybe at one point do get rich, but go through periods of struggle and poverty. You get their stories and their telling of their encounters with God. The other thing about the Old Testament, which I think is hard for us to glean when we read it, especially if you just end up reading lists and lists of kings or other people descended from other people and that kind of thing, is that it's beautifully written. It's all written with a kind of poetry about it, which we don't appreciate unless we become a Hebrew scholar. 
which most of us are not going to do. But it's not simply a collection of people scribbling stuff down. It's very carefully crafted and it's full of depth and meaning as you lift up the layers away and you look deeper and deeper within it. Um, it is like uh, digging up treasure in a field where you keep digging and you get more and more and more and more. But that's hard work. And I often say that the Bible is a bit like a fruitcake or a Christmas cake that has been left for a long time has become really, really dense. And some Christmas cakes can be like that, can't they? And you need like a chainsaw to cut through them. Well, that is the Bible. It is a really dense book, which is why a lot of people find it difficult to read or don't read it, or don't read certain parts of it. The other main really good reason for discovering more about the Old Testament is that the New Testament draws on the Old Testament so much. Jesus and Paul and the others who wrote the Gospels and the letters, they were completely saturated with the stories of the Old Testament. So time and again, things they do and things they say are directly related to happenings in the Old Testament. So for example, many of Jesus' stories that he tells are retellings of Old Testament stories. Some of the miracles that he does, they are reenactments of things that the prophets have done in the Old Testament. And it's all for a purpose, it's all for a reason. And if we make the connections, we see the stories and the miracles and Jesus' whole lifestyle in a completely different light. That's Dave's podcast. Thanks very much for listening. Mm-hmm.